Hey everybody, this is Burke and I want to talk to you today a little bit about observable arrays in NativeScript. So let's take a look at the, the uh, demo we're going to be building today. It's a simple application where we were going to type in some things here like item one, two, or three, press enter, and then that uh, list of items will just grow down here. Uh, we call this an observable uh, array or an observable collection of items, an item, a collection of items that changes, and when it changes, we know about it. So let me show you how that works here. Uh, first, let's go through and do some wiring in our uh, TypeScript file. So let's, let me jump back real quick. You can take a look at the XML file. It's pretty simple, just a stack layout in a text field. So we'll jump over and look at the TypeScript file, which is also really, really simple. I pulled in some dependencies here, so you don't have to watch me type that. The first thing that we want to do is create an actual model for this page. So let's do that. We'll say um, class view model extends observable and if you're wondering why we're doing class and extending observable and all that goodness check out uh, episode four on observables all right so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to create a constructor so we'll say constructor constructor there we go thank you intellisense and inside of that we'll just call super and now we have an observable that we can work with let's add some properties to this observable let's add an, an items where this is going to be our observable array so we'll make it type observable array Let's do that. Now, once we have an observable array, you'll notice that in NativeScript and TypeScript, these things are typed. So we can say it's a string. So it's an, observ an observable array of strings. So we need to use that. Now, once we've got that, we actually need to create a new one in the constructor. So we'll say new, sorry, this.items equals new observable array of type string. And then inside of this thing, we can say item one, Right, item two, pretty easy here. We can start populating with items and that is an observable array. Now, the only thing that we've got left to do is actually create an instance of this view model, let view model equal new view model, which is our class. And then that will call the constructor and pre-populate our observable array. And then uh, we set the binding context for the page. So page.bindingContext equals view model. Now, let me add a W here. Now, in order to display these items on our um, page, we're going to need some sort of uh, UI component that will repeat items in a collection. And in NativeScript, that's called a repeater. There's several different types, including the list view. But the most basic type is called a repeater. So let's add one of those in. So we'll say a repeater. And a repeater has an items property. And we can just bind that to the items, which was on our TypeScript file right here, OK, to the repeater. Now, once we have the repeater here, you'll notice that if I don't do anything else to this repeater besides specify the items and I just click save, uh, let's take a look at the application. You'll see that we get item one and item two. Well, that was really easy. How does NativeScript know to do that? Well, in this case, we have a very simple array, observable array. So we don't have to do anything at all because uh, NativeScript will automatically pull these things out. Now, it's just guessing at what we want it to do because we haven't given it enough information, but we could give it some more information. For instance, we could say, and how the way you'll normally use the repeater is you'll say, uh, I have an item template. So I will say repeater dot item template. And we could say, let's close this thing out, repeater.item template. And then in here, we can put anything we want, images, labels, text fields. So we could say label and then text equals, well, how do we reference just a bare string inside of an observable array of strings? We do it with a special syntax that says value. Now, what this is going to give us is exactly what the repeater was giving us before we even specified an item template. So again, and save this, and when we jump back over to the application, you'll see that we're getting the exact same thing that we were getting before, item one and item two. Now, let's go ahead and uh, tell you what, let's spruce this up a little bit, just give this class of item, just make this look a little bit better, and then we'll uh, create, we'll use this little trick here, using a stack layout with a special class that I created to uh, create a horizontal line uh, below the main box, just sprucing up our styles just a little bit here. So see how that looks. Wonderful. All right, so let's go ahead and change this a little bit. All right, I'm gonna jump back over to the TypeScript file here. And I, what I wanna do here is instead of having just an array of strings, let's uh, work with actual uh, objects here. So I'm gonna create a new class item. And then inside of that, we'll have uh, each item will have a name. Let's say it's a string. And then it'll also have an ID, which is a type number. So this is more like actual items that we would work with in an actual uh, application. So in the constructor for each item, we wanna take in a, the actual name. So we wanna 
ask the name when the, when the item is actually created, which is a type string. And then what we want to do is say this.name equals name, and then we can uh, auto-generate an ID by saying this.id equals new date, which is a JavaScript object, and then get time, which gives us a timestamp as a number, and that gives us a random ID for each object. So let's go down here and change this from string to item. So now we have an observable array of these item, this class item here. So we'll go down here and change this a bit. We'll say that this is item, and then these things are no longer valid. We need to say new item here. Uh, TypeScript is killing me with the parentheses here. And new item. There we go. And just like that, we have now modified this thing so that instead of using uh, just strings, we're actually using classes. We have a collection of class items. So let's take a look, look at what the repeater does with that. If we jump over there and take a look at it, you'll notice that it now says object object because the repeater doesn't know which property from this object we want to display. So it's basically saying, you've got an object, I need more information. So let's give it some more information. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to say main page, and let's change this value to name because we're specifying the name property on the uh, on the item. So let's save this. Uh, and once we save this and jump back over, what you'll notice is that we get the exact same thing we got before, which is just item one and item two. This is how repeaters and observable arrays work. Let's take this a step further and see what it looks like to add something to this array. In order to do that, we need to have uh, handle the return key press on the keyboard. In other words, when we bring this keyboard up, we type in item three like this, I, I hit enter, keyboard goes away, but nothing happens because no event is being triggered. So I wanna change that and add an event here. So let's do that. So the first thing we need to do is specify return key type. And it basically says, what type of return key do you want in your uh, application? Right now it says return, if we look at it, um, and I may have saved too quickly, see it says return right here. Um, but when we set the return key type to done, now we get a done button. Pretty nifty, right? Okay, so now we wanna handle the return key press. So we just say return press, and then let's bind to an event that we don't have yet called add item. And then so that we can actually uh, get the value of the text on this text field, let's go ahead and say that this is bound to new item. Neither of these things exist yet. This event does not exist and this new item property does not exist yet. So let's add those on the model. Let's come over here and we'll say on the view model, we have items and then we also have new item and by that's a string and by default, we want that to be an empty string. Very nice. Okay, and then let's add the, what did we call it? Add item, what was it? Um, add item. So let's add the add item function. So we'll come down and say add item, right? It's a function. And inside of here, what we wanna do is say this dot items, which is our observable array. We wanna push, here's all the different things we can do with items. All of these different, maybe you check out the documentation to see what each one of these does. We're gonna push, which appends a new element to the array. So we'll do that, and then what do we wanna push? Well, we wanna push this dot new item. Now, we can't push just this dot new item. We need to push a new, uh, new item and push this dot new item as the name. All right, there we go. So now we're pushing a new item onto the observable array. So let's save that. We'll jump back over to our application. All right, so now let's go up and type in. We'll say item three, hit enter. And now item three gets appended to the array. The UI gets updated automatically because it's an observable array. That's awesome. And we can come up here and say item four and keep on appending things. Now you'll notice that this doesn't get cleared out when we, um, when we hit the enter key. And I wanna show you how we can do that because it's gonna bring up something a little bit quirky with observables that may confuse you. So the way that we would clear this out normally is we'd come back here into the code and we would say, we, you would think that we could say this dot new item equals an empty string. Let me show you what happens if we do that because that's almost correct. That's what we did here, right? We just referenced the items in the array directly. Um, here, we should be able to do the same thing. So let's jump over to the app. If I say item one, item two, item three, and I hit enter, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because the way that observables work, if you go back to the uh, episode four, we talked about how observables have a this.get and a this.set method. 
And if you don't call get or set on those items, then the UI doesn't know that anything has changed. The reason why we didn't have to do that here is because we're using this push method and the push method is directly on the observable. So we don't have to say this dot get items and then push into it. And because we're not updating the UI here, new item is going to contain the current value of new item. It's just that we're not worried about the UI refreshing, but down here, we actually need to say this dot set new item, right? And then what do we want to set it to an empty string? We'll close it off. And now when we go back to the application, you'll see that now we can say item three and what happens? It clears out just like we wanted it to. We can keep on going. Those are observable arrays in NativeScript. I hope that was helpful. Enjoy.